So today we start talking about ergodic theory. So this will be an introductory class. And this will be very introductory. We are putting ergodic theory inside a probability course. But of course ergodic theory in and on itself is a very big subject that can fit into one or even more uh, courses standalone courses but here we are gonna do a, a much simplified perspective I'm gonna prove some important results on the subject but it's uh, it's not uh, exhaustive by no means and we we'll start introducing some basic concepts so we'll be talking frequently about probability measures on product spaces so for example we could imagine that we have um, metric space to the power of the naturals so this is another way to say an infinite but countable product of S with itself um, or in several situations we will also deal with S times uh, to the power of z uh, the integers so this is a kind of loose notation but it's as if we were talking about this okay so here you can think of it as functions from f or the space of functions from uh, n to s and here you can think of it as the space of functions from z to s so this can be made rigorous in this way so now uh, we are going to introduce several uh, concepts and definitions about such probability measures on product spaces. So one such definition is stationarity. So we say that P is stationary if uh, for every k the distribution of x0, x1 and so on is equal to the distribution of xk, xk plus 1 and so on and so forth the infinite uh, vector now this we should say a word about what this x means so these are the canonical projections so xi goes from s n to s and it takes a vector of the type little x1 little x2 and so on and returns little xi so it's the canonical projection in the i coordinate and what we are saying is that the first zero, first second, uh, this as a vector has the same distribution as if you look from k onwards. In the other case of the of z, we could also define analogously this. Uh, x minus 1, x0, x1, and so on. This has the same distribution as, um, you know, x minus k minus 1, x, sorry, xk minus 1, xk, and so on. But this notation is a bit informal, so we are not going to write it as such now. This is perfectly fine, but this notation is a bit imprecise. So we're going to introduce this definition later with more care. Once we introduced the, we have introduced the shifts, which are an important uh, component of this study. So for now, just think that we define the stationarity only in this space. That's fine for now, but it makes sense in both spaces. Now that we have a notion of uh, stationarity, it's nice to give examples of stationary processes 
and the two examples that I'm going to give they are uh, very good to keep in mind because they can give nice examples and nice counter examples so the example zero is um, P is delta of A A A and so on and so forth so if P is deterministic and always gives a sequence of points that are stationary points meaning they repeat then P is stationary this re that's why it's called example 0 <laughs> example 1 is already much more interesting this is already uh, giving us a lot of uh, what we're going to talk about in the future P could be a product measure so we just take an infinite product of other probabilities uh, on S so if this is an ID product of uh, probabilities on S then both phase P is going to be uh, stationary the reason is when you look at these canonical projections this is ID with distribution P, this is ID with distribution P, so there is no change in here, they have the same distribution. And for a second example, which is actually very useful when we are trying to create counter examples to other things, we're going to give this. So P is going to be a delta of something with probability one half and delta of something else with probability one half so what are these two things the first is going to be a b a b and so on so we either alternate between a and b starting with a or starting with b this is b a b a and so on and so forth so a and b of course are elements of S. Let's imagine that they are different. Otherwise, we are in the above example here. But if they are different, we are talking about something else. Something that is stationary, but it's not uh, uh, stationary in the deterministic sense like this. So the relevant aspect of this, why, why this is an interesting counter example sometimes, because if, if I tell you the value of x0 this gives information uh, about xk for every k it's the kind of the opposite of the first example so in this example if I give you information about x0 I'm not telling you anything about xk and here if I tell you about x0 you know everything about all the other x's so these are the examples we have for now um, now let's uh, study another perspective on this so whenever we talk about ergodic theory we have two ways to approach the, the subject one is from the probabilities sometimes they not denoted by mu, sometimes denoted by p so there is a and one approach that looks at probabilities and there is another approach that looks at uh, functions so we know that they are dual to each other so it's kind of equivalent to look at functions or look at probabilities and what we're going to say is, some, is usually like a function is ergodic with respect to a probability or a probability is ergodic with respect to a function That's uh, essentially the same what is more common is for people in probability to say that P is ergodic or invariant and for people from dynamical system they'll say that the function is ergodic or invariant so this is more from where you come from that changes the notation but we're gonna give the two approaches somehow in this class so let's talk a little bit about functions so given um, a function f 
from S to S and mu a probability on S of course if the sigma algebra uh, let's call it F uh, we say that mu is invariant with respect to f if mu is equal to mu f minus 1. So here we are just composing with the pre-image of f. So if we have such a situation, we can in fact uh, define something in the product space because here we're not talking about the product space, right? We're talking about the fixed S. But we can go to the product space in the following way. We just pick X0 distributed as mu. Okay, mu is a fixed measure or S right so we pick one element with distribution mu and now we define xn to be the iteration the nth iteration of f on x0 so what does this, what does this mean so f0 of something is just this something and f n plus 1 of something is f of fn of this something. So this is just the nth iteration of the function f applied to x0. So this is this uh, induces a random element of S N. Right? We just you this is our probability space, but somehow we managed to construct an element of S N. So this has a certain distribution. So its distribution we can call it usually we, what we call it is like P X I. So say so this is one way to describe it, but we could also call it uh, P like this. So this is just a distribution on the product space as we talked before. And this is going to be invariant. So claim uh, P as above is uh, stationary so this is another example so why is this so suppose that you take some b that is measurable with respect to s to the power n okay so we just have a boolean set that looks at n copies of elements of uh, n elements of n elements of s so we can measure this type of probabilities xk xk plus 1 until xk plus n minus 1 this is an element here and we can look at the probability that it belongs to b why are we doing this because this type of events they completely characterize the distribution of the infinite sequence xk, xk plus 1, and so on. This infinite sequence has a distribution that is fully characterized by things, events like this. So this is why we are looking at this event. And one way to write this is just, you know, we know that how these elements were constructed. They were constructed by applying f iteratively. And if we look at x0, x1, and so on, and we apply, so if we apply fk to 
the first element here we get xk if we apply it to the second we get xk plus 1 sorry here we don't go until infinity we stop made a mistake here this is we stop at x n minus 1 so if we do this iteration k times in this vector we obtain the vector above this is an equality point by point now we can unfold this thing here and look what's the probability that h of something belongs to a that is p f minus 1 of a okay sorry h minus 1 p h minus 1 of a so essentially what we are doing here is uh, looking at the probability that f minus 1 f minus 1 um, sorry f minus 1 f minus 1 f minus 1 k times uh, of the following event that x0 f of x0 f n minus 1 of x0 belongs to b so this is what we are calculating and if you remember sorry this is exact the distribution here is not p anymore we are folding this down to the distribution that originated p and if you look at this this is invariant right we assumed that this has the same distribution as mu itself so all of this is just mu and we're calculating mu of this event x0 until f n minus 1 of x0 this vector belongs to b and we can go back and rewrite this as the probability that x0 xn minus 1 belongs to b so all of that rewriting gave us that p is stationary so p starting at xk and p starting at x0 have the same distribution okay so this you can think of it as the example 3 it's an example that is almost deterministic there is some randomness to choose the first element x0 but after we chose the first element everything else is deterministic and this is very common in uh, dynamical systems one way to see this is to look at a kind of diagram we're gonna talk about this diagram later so imagine that we define some gamma that is implicit in the calculations that we did above so gamma which can think of it as gamma f because it has a dependence on f is just a function that takes the initial point and returns all the points so it takes a little x0 here small x0 and returns x0 f of x0 f2 of x0 and so on and so forth so why is it interesting to define such a gamma because we can actually rewrite the above proof in a more complex way by just saying that for example p is mu uh, so here we have s right here we have gamma f here we have s n and we have a probability here which is mu and p is just a push forward so it's just gamma minus one uh, mu this is the definition of p so this actually helps if you want to rewrite this using 
Uh, you can replace this by mu gamma and it's gonna be look nicer, they're both proof. But another reason to introduce this gamma is to see this diagram here, which is very instructive. You can apply S a gamma to see all the iterations of your dynamical system. But one thing you could do is to first apply F here and then apply gamma. What would happen? You end up, of course, in the same space. But what is it that is missing here? So this is what we're going to talk about now. So what makes this diagram commute? So we, to, do, to understand this, we have to write what are the elements here. So here we have x0. If you apply gamma, you end up with x0, x1, and so on. Oh, by the way, I'll not even write x1, I'll write f of x0 to make it even more explicit. f of f of x0, and so on. If we apply f here, you end up with f of x0, of course. And here, after applying gamma, you start with f of x0, f of x1, sorry, f2 of x0, f3, x0, and so on. So, you see, what we have done from here to here was to shift, delete the first coordinate and shift the rest. This is the motivation for us to study the shift function. So phi is going from S n to itself. Oops, n. It takes a vector x0, x1, and so on. Deletes the first coordinate. It completely forgets about the first coordinate and starts with the first one following along. So this is uh, the definition of the shift. And it makes complete sense when we talk about integer valued products. So S to the Z instead also makes complete sense. Now, if we take uh, x minus 1, x0, x1, and so on. We're going to take it to x0, uh, x1, x2, and so on. Here there is no loss. Here we lost completely the first value. Here there is no loss. But if you don't like this notation, if you think, okay, this notation is, what does it even mean? I mean this dot 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 something where is my point of view here so if you don't like this notation there is a rigorous way to understand this I'm gonna do it here but it's kind of you know if you don't like it you can also forget about it an element here is just a function say omega that goes from Z to S so you take a function omega and bring it to the function phi of omega and phi of omega of j is omega of j plus 1. So this is what the function, so this defines the function phi, which is also an element of Sz. So this means that we defined the application phi, because for every omega we defined another element called phi of omega. But if you don't like this definition, you can use the intuitive thing above here, but this is the rigorous way to introduce the shift in Z. So we, we can now talk about um, what we said before about being uh, stationary in terms of this 
shift function. So what do I mean by that? So we, we mentioned before that P is stationary if x0, x1 and so on have the same distribution as xk, xk plus 1 and so on. This is of course equivalent to uh, x0, x1 and so on having the same distribution as x1, x2 and so on. So this, is, this before was for every k. Why is it equivalent? Because uh, if you want to show that x0 has the same distribution of uh, x2, x3 and so on, we know that x2, x0 has the same distribution of x1, so what does it mean in terms of the shift? So this element here is just phi of x0, x1 and so on, right? So when we write this, what we are saying is that P, which is the distribution of this guy, is equal to P mu minus 1, sorry, uh, sorry, phi minus 1. So the push forward with respect to phi. So if this is true, we can replace P again by phi minus 1, you get P phi minus 1 phi minus 1 so in the end what we are saying is that the distribution of x0, x1 and so on is the same as x2, x3 and so on so stationarity is just saying in another words It's equivalent to saying that P is invariant with respect to the shift. So this is another perspective of uh, the same definition. But why am I giving two equivalent notations for the same thing? Because this is what you're going to see in most probability books. So you're saying that probability is stationary and in dynamical systems often what you see is like P is invariant with respect to the shift and when we gave all the above examples here you see I, I gave you examples of stationarity I'm gonna translate them into the dynamical systems notation okay so I'm gonna use purple for dynamical systems so here what we are, we are saying in dynamical systems sense is that uh, the function that takes a to a okay, if a function has a as a fixed point then this uh, then it's invariant with respect to this um, to the mass at A. So this is what this is saying. Um, this infinite product here can also be uh, I'm not going to talk much about this infinite product here but uh, in essence what this is saying is we get something when you have a, an infinite product like this we have something that is extremely ergodic in dynamical systems this is the paradise this never happens even like usually you have a dependence between x1 x2 and so on such a extreme independence would be uh, too good to be true in dynamical systems here what we have is a function that takes a to b and takes b to a 
So this is a periodic orbit of period 2 and this measure is invariant for this dynamics. And the last example we gave, called it example 3, is then we have a, a measure that is invariant with respect to our dynamics. So this gave rise to an invariant, uh, sorry, to a stationary measure, but we can also say that the measure P, which was defined so on the example where we had mu uh, on S, which was invariant with respect to F, and we had this gamma F. We defined P as uh, mu gamma F minus 1. So in this example that we talked about, where we select the first element and then just iterate F, this measure here, P, as a measure on Sn, is said to be uh, invariant with respect to the shift. So this is another way to say that P is um, that P is stationary. And here in, the, in this extreme example of independence we can also say that P is invariant with respect to the shift. This would be uh, one way to, to state the stationarity of P in the dynamical systems notation. Okay, so in the next class we're going to study uh, invariant events. So for now we're just talking about invariant measures uh, or stationary measures. In the next class, we're going to talk about invariant events and how they give rise to the notion of ergodicity, which is so central, of course, in the study of ergodic theory. So, see you.